All right, hello, my name is Diana Rendina. I am a teacher librarian, and I am going to be talking today about bringing hands-on learning to middle school science with Makerspace Collaborations. So I'm going to be sharing a lot about a project that I did with my sixth grade science teacher this past school year, and how we've used that to bring the Makerspace into her curriculum. For a little bit of background, um, like I said, I am a teacher librarian at Tampa Preparatory School, which is a 6 through 12 independent school. I've been there since 2017. Before that, I was the media specialist at Stuart Middle Magnet School from 2010 to 2017. I blog at renovatedlearning.com. In 2016, I won the ISTE Outstanding Edu Young Educator Award, and I've written two books, Reimagining Library Spaces, Transform Your Space on Any Budget, and Challenge-Based Learning in the School Library Makerspace that I co-wrote with Colleen and Erin Graves. To give you just a little bit of context and background about Tampa Prep, um, like I said, the school is an independent 6 through 12. Um, it's a college prep school founded in downtown Tampa in 1974. We have around 700 students, give or take, between the middle school and the high school. We are one-to-one -one iPad, so every single student has their own device. All of our classrooms are designed as active learning environments. Um, the current building that we're in was constructed in 2002, and the maker space was started when I came in in 2017. So for getting started with this project, um, really the way that this project started, which a lot of collaborations do, I think, it was just with a quick conversation. I had been doing after school maker days in our library for a couple of years. Um, and it was in spring of 2020 when we were doing some activities and I had a lot of students who were really engaged and excited about them. And my sixth grade science teacher happened to pop up to the library for something and we just had a conversation like, hey, I'd really like to bring something like this to my classroom. And so from that conversation, we talked about it, emailed back and forth a few times. Um, we decided to apply for a school grant to get a stipend to work on this project over the summer. So we went and did that application, kind of brainstormed what it would look like. We got the grant. And so then we went on to collaborate over the summer of 2021 and put this project together. So when we first started planning the collaboration, one of the things we did was we both read the book, Making Science, Reimagining STEM Education in Middle School and Beyond, because we wanted to get some ideas of different ways we could incorporate makerspace projects into our middle school curriculum. We also read other books um, like Invent to Learn and different blogs and articles about bringing the makerspace into the science classroom to get some more ideas and ways that we could make this work. We purchased supplies. We decided to create a mini classroom maker space in my teacher's classroom so that we could do projects with the students in her classroom. And then sometimes we would also bring them up to the library maker space. So we took kind of a hybrid approach where we could go both into her classroom and into our library. So using the science department budget, we purchased things like Legos, connects, cardboard construction tools, bins to store cardboard and recyclables. And I do want to mention that if you want to see kind of exactly what we purchased at the end of this presentation, I have a link to my presentation resources page and I have a whole blog post that goes into detail about what we purchased and why. We continue to work on planning. We collaborated using Google Docs to start kind of brainstorming potential projects that could tie in with her curriculum. We had a couple of Zoom meetings to discuss and plan projects. And the main thing we wanted to do was finalize the very first project which was our TERP tank safety device project that we did at the very beginning of the school year. So <clears throat> at the very beginning of every school year, um, and this is pretty standard, a lot of science classes, students learn about lab safety. So they learn about ways to be safe in the lab, what to do if there's a chemical spill or a fire or something gets in their eyes. And so what the teacher and I decided to do was to work on a project where students would design their own safety device based on what they'd been learning about lab safety. So we had students using recycled materials only for this project, and they had to kind of brainstorm a device, come up with why it would be useful, make a prototype of this device, and then pitch it. So we had all kinds of projects with this one. Um, students created safety gloves, safety goggles. There was a lab organizer to organize all of your supplies. 
Um, one of my personal favorites was the lab Roomba, which is that upper right hand corner one, um, which was a vacuum cleaner that would clean up broken glass in the lab, but also separate out if there were things students had dropped like earrings or something like that, it would separate them into a different section. So it was really cool to see the ideas these students are coming up with. And what's really awesome about this project, it was it was the first or second week of school. So these students were all brand new to our school, didn't know each other. Um, and we're just immediately diving into making some really cool projects and getting really creative. To wrap up this project, we did what we call Terp Tank, which is kind of a take off of Shark Tank because we are uh, the Terrapins. And students had to make design pitches. They had to pitch their device that they created and explain why they thought the school should invest in their device for our lab safety. We brought in guest judges for this. So in this particular picture, we have the head of our middle school who's like our principal. Um, for other classes, we had the head of our science department. We had other science teachers. So they were able to get some real feedback, which I think that's an important aspect is getting that authentic audience. You know, here we have our, our head of our science department actually looking at a student's device and asking questions and giving the students examples of, well, here's something in real life that kind of does this and the, what you're on is on the right track. Um, giving students those opportunities for authentic feedback is really powerful. And I think that's a really important thing to incorporate into any kind of makerspace project that you do. The second project that we did, um, which was more around the second quarter, was tied in with earthquakes. So the students had been learning about earthquakes in their class and their curriculum. They'd been kind of talking about different types of earthquakes um, and what kinds of structures would help withstand an earthquake. So we had students go through a challenge where they had to build a structure that could withstand an earthquake um, using a shake table that our science teacher found like a YouTube tutorial to create and built from scratch. But the kind of key to this one that makes it a little bit different was that students had different materials depending on their group. So we divided our students up into five groups. One group only had access to cardboard and recycled materials. One group only had access to strawbies, which are these little straws and connectors that you can use to build with. One group only had Legos and one group only had connects. The fifth group could choose anything. So any of the materials that we had were fair game. <coughs> and this was really fun and it was kind of a nice creative constraint for this project because students got to see how to work with a limited source of materials. So they got to kind of look at what their material was and think about what could we do to make this stronger. When we were all done, the students had all their projects together. We put everything onto a shake table. So you'll see here how it kind of works. And you can see there as the earthquake gets a little stronger, it puts a little bit more stress on the structure. And so we did that with every single um, one of our students projects and it was really fun for them to get to see kind of how their projects would handle the shake table. And the cool thing about this and having the different materials is that it gave us the chance to have conversations about real world connections. And so we talked about different countries um, that might have different resources available in terms of their construction and their building or their building codes and how they'll have to work within kind of the parameters of what they have. And then we talked about, you know, what we could do to help other countries that might not have access to materials that can really withstand strong earthquakes. So it was a really nice connection there to kind of get those discussions going. For the third project, we did a weather data collector. And this project was really, really fun. What I really loved about this project was that we brought all of our students up to the library so that they could use our maker space and our library space. And this was a big goal of this project when we first kind of came up with it, is we wanted to make sure that every single sixth grader had a chance to visit the library 
and use the ideal lab and really see both of those spaces as something that they have access to and that is there for them. Um, so we planned this project, we did this and had all of the sixth grade classes come up throughout uh, the course of a couple of days to work on this project. And what the students had for their challenge was they had to design a device that could collect different types of weather. They'd been learning about things like barometric pressure and temperature and rain gauges and different things like that. So students had to design a device that could measure all of these things um, without the aid of any kind of like electronics. So um, it's not something that you could connect to your phone or anything like that. It was just kind of how would you collect data if you were like stranded on a desert island. So students worked on these projects together. And again, like I said, the really nice thing was that all of sixth grade came up to the idea lab. So every single student in our sixth grade got to come up, visit our maker space and make use of the materials and things there. By having our students come up and work on their projects in the library, um, we gave them more of a familiarity with their space and more of a comfort in our space so that in the future, you know, ideally our students will feel more comfortable coming up and using the maker space for other things or coming to an after school maker day um, or different things like that. One kind of key element of this project that was really fun was we decided to introduce all of our sixth graders to 3D printing and 3D design. So for one aspect of their project, they had to 3D print something for each group. So um, the very first class where we brainstormed I showed everyone how to use Tinkercad. I got everyone logged in and assigned to classes in Tinkercad. And then students had to use that to design and build something. <coughs> and this was really fun because for a lot of my students, this was their very first time doing anything with 3D printing. So they got to go from that kind of ideation phase of making their design to watching the 3D printer as it was printing out their design and other students' designs and then using that in their project. And so this was, again, a really great opportunity to show our students what resources they have access to. And, you know, as we were doing this, we kind of had the conversation of like, if you want to 3D print something during the school year, you can come up and 3D print something. And a lot of students didn't know that that was something they had access to. So for this one, again, students went and did kind of pitches of their designs. We had all kinds of other devices. There were a lot of rain gauges. There were a lot of thermometers. Um, some students had kind of weather vanes that would show you the direction of the wind. There were all kinds of really interesting ideas. Some of them had solar power panels so that it would be charged. They came up with some pretty amazing ideas. And then again, we had students present their projects in front of the class and they had to explain, you know, this is how it works. This is why we designed it this way. Um, this was kind of our thinking in creating this. And so it was super fun. I think you can tell from the pictures that they had a blast. Um, and even something which can normally be kind of stressful, like presenting up in front of your peers and your teachers. Um, I think by this point with the third project, they were starting to get a lot more comfortable with presenting and a lot more comfortable with each other. So those were the three projects we did this past year. Um, we're hoping to add more projects in future years. So these are just kind of some of the things that we're thinking about um, doing in the future, maybe doing projects with artificial reefs, talking about ocean pollution. Um, biomes have been a pretty big project in the past. So maybe using 3D printing in biomes, um, talking about alternative energy. And we're also looking at the possibility of maybe also expanding this to the seventh grade next year too, so that we can do even more makerspace collaborations with our science classes. To give you just a little bit of the logistics of how these projects worked, um, each project lasted four days. So um, it wasn't a huge commitment of time for me, but it was definitely you know a pretty good commitment. It was about a week for most of them. Um, on the very first day, we introduced the design challenge and brainstormed ideas. So the teacher would usually create some guidelines and kind of some um, things they needed to make sure to include in their project. And the first day there was no building. The kids were just designing and brainstorming, whether that was on paper with markers or on the whiteboards or on their iPads, they were just brainstorming. On days two and three, students built the prototypes. So they had access to the materials and the different things and they just spent those two days building. 
On day four, that was when they would present their prototype and kind of explain their ideas. Um, always to the whole class, sometimes we had guests come in and also kind of judge the presentations too. And there wasn't like any winning or losing, it was more just having someone else there who could give some feedback. For assessment, um, we decided to not have students be graded on the projects. We didn't want to have that pressure of having a grade attached to their final prototype. We wanted the kids to feel open enough to try different things and maybe take some risks and have things that didn't work out, um, especially for the earthquake project. We really emphasized with kids like if your thing falls apart, it's not meaning that you're going to fail. Like we want you to learn from this experience. So we did not grade the projects. Um, what we did do is after each design session, um, you know, so those four days of brainstorming, building and presenting wrapped up. We had our students fill out a go formative and they had to reflect on what they learned and how it connected with the curriculum. So the teacher um, created these and kind of had different guiding questions to see where the students were at in their thinking and what they were learning from this experience. So it was a very um, <clears throat> um, kind of more of an organic assessment. It wasn't a specific like you have to hit these points on this rubric or you fail. <coughs> we wanted our students motivation to come from engagement rather than working towards a grade. That was really important to us in these projects. So at this point, I would take any questions. But since this is a recording of the presentation, um, if you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am on Twitter at Diana L. Rendina. And if you go to my website, which is going to be on that next resources page, I have other contact information there too, um, which my website is renovatelearning.com. So I hope this presentation was valuable to you and that you found some um, good information that you can take to your school. To access my slides and all the resources that I talked about in this presentation, you can go to my website, renovatedlearning.com, and I have a presentations page that organizes resources by conference. So this one will be under ISTE Live 2022. And right here, that link is the website and that QR code will take you straight there. So I hope that this was beneficial. And again, if you would like to reach out to me with any questions or anything you'd like to know more about, um, please feel free to contact me on Twitter at Diana L. Rendina or go to my website and use the contact form there. Thank you very much.